welcome back to Teacher Quit Talk. I'm Cass. I'm Redacted, and we'll let our guest introduce herself. You have the Thank floor. Thank you. Um, I'm Lauren Crow. I am queer librarian. I was really excited about the username change. You know, it's a big deal. Might previously have known me as classroom yogi, or just not known me. And all of those things are valid, so. I'm like the dust. I'm gone before you know me. Can you, are we going to tell the people why it's a big deal that you got to change your name to queer librarians yes. because oh, yeah. we already had um, one person who was victimized by the same yes. bitch on the podcast. Oh, oh, I have tell the people like oh, so <laughs> I was uh, just a little new classroom teacher. Um, it was my third year of teaching in the beginning of 2021. Third grade, rocking and rolling, classroom yogi because I taught kids yoga and use that in my classroom because I needed it as my own uh co- like coping skill and like Hell yeah. management like the amount of times they'd be like why are we doing yoga I'm like or even just like breathing I'd be like because I need to manage like my emotions at the yeah. moment it was because I think one or more of us might be having a hard time <laughs> it's me I think at least one or more might be struggling 99% of the time it was me I literally would like <laughs> crawl into my calm corner sometimes I was so dramatic and they'd be like <gasps> Teacher's sad. Teacher's sad. Your students would acknowledge that you were sad, though. Like, that might saw me cry before, and they just were like, they had nothing. They were like, yeah, seems like you're going through something. But on another note, I would like to throw this chair across the room, and do we have any snacks? Mm -hmm. Just when you get a minute. Third graders didn't give a (laughs) shit. Not in the slightest. Not in the slightest. Love them with all my heart, though. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways, I started using TikTok when COVID started because I wanted to find people and connect because... It was fun back then it was I it wasn't such a shit show back then we had a good time but I literally was just like starting to kind of like come out come come out one I know my name is queer librarian but if in case you didn't put that together I am queer um <laughs> I'm bisexual which I didn't really figure out or uh acknowledge till my senior year of college so that was only a few years ago so my first year of teaching when COVID started I had a hot mess of a first year I was not offered job to return the next year why because my evaluation wasn't good enough oh my god i hate that what year was it though 2019 to 2020 but my evaluation happened literally no 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 my evaluation happened in february (laughs) right before covid happened oh my god but they would have done one in the spring had covid not happened no no, that was my that was my final one yeah and you know what it's like one death round what like like, it honestly like that seems i'm not to judge but just as someone who's had to create systems for evaluation that's not the best I've seen it worked out and like I don't think I could have returned like I was not meant to be a first grade teacher I was not meant to be a teacher in general but I was definitely not meant to be a first grade teacher so few of us are meant to be a first grade teacher and I think that's one of the many issues plaguing our fine nature I don't like first grade first grade shit I'm gonna be honest I could never would never again love those kids first grade's hard like really they got hard. to <laughs> The first day, um, I was like prepping my room. I was like, oh my gosh, for open house, I'm gonna have like all these little questions around the room. And then I like had these things up, and then I was like, when like they came and they were like not answering them, and I was like, why aren't? And then I was like, holy shit, they can't read it. <laughs> and it like hit me because I'd been student teaching with fourth graders, <laughs> and I was just like, oh my god. So, I've been there. It's, that I've literally, there. that's the equivalent of like getting on the airplane and realizing you left your bag like at your house. <laughs> like it's just, you're so far in to realize that. Like, yes, I remember doing the same thing. I wrote directions on the board for what to do when they came in the classroom. And I was like, why aren't they oh, doing it? Oh shit. Like, <laughs> can't read any I haven't taught you that yet I got hired also for my first job three days before school started so that was oh, like mood <laughs> at least I had a week and a half god damn the bulletin board in the back it's like bare I did not have time to put up anything except I like stapled a few like printed out things from Target <laughs> So it's like the most trash border. I'm like, that encapsulates everything. Just the single piece of paper hanging by the one corner thumbtack, just swaying. We weren't allowed to put anything on our bulletin boards my first year. I got yelled at for not putting enough on my bulletin boards. And I said, excuse me, have you ever heard of minimalism? Well, here's what you say to them now. It was the Reggio Emilia approach. And when you have Reggio Emilia, you build the classroom together and we we 
weren't allowed to put anything that wasn't student created on the walls and we also were not allowed to use any colors that did not occur in nature but you should have just been like listen it's research based I am trying this Reggio Emilia approach fuck you no my problem was they basically were like misredacted we want you to take your entire pacing guide turn it into art and then put it on the walls like everything was supposed to be standards based and I had curated an incredible vibe everything was either covered in white marble contact paper or was teal like that was the vibe and so my bulletin boards were like very minimal with like social studies vocabulary and like I would make like cute little posters on Canva that were like how to recognize bias in text and it was like all very aesthetic and very like basic information and they're like can you please put student work up and I was like um excuse me we've curated a vibe yeah they (laughs) don't get it they haven't made anything that goes with the vibe in here I was like once we establish the vibe with yeah. them, then their work will be on the wall. Yeah, I'm so glad I've never been in a school like that where they were like, you have to do this and put up student work and shit because no. that's never worked No, so I me. got in trouble because I had groups in my classroom, which they wanted everything in groups. And I had a little thing hanging from the ceiling above each group that would say like green group, yeah, yeah. blue group, red group, just to make it easy. I'd be like, red group, go get your supplies, yeah. whatever. And they were like, misredacted, it needs to be standards based. <laughs> so they wanted me to like name it after groups and history and I was like so you would like me to name this group the confederates that's the (laughs) I was like in U.S. history you'd like me to name the groups after the examples we're going to use in U.S. history no 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 just to clarify okay so your room the singular hanging target poster during reading group we We continue continue. so basically my first year was like a hot mess which like I don't I have not met or talked to any teacher who was like yes I thrived in my first year and if they say that I have I don't believe them. they're lying and they had 12 kids but you know I like was getting through it the problem was I was not consistent with like behavior management or like even like I tried really hard to form relationships I cared so too much they not cared too much I cared mm. a lot about what other people thought of me and I just was genuinely way overwhelmed I was not prepared and wasn't given the support like mm. they really did try I do appreciate like they did try to help me our um, specialist did work with me a lot but I just wasn't over my head and it didn't go how it should so it is what it is I look back on it and I learned a lot (laughs) from first grade but the thing was COVID happening and me being like oh wow I have two weeks off was the best thing that could have happened to me it's so hard saying that because I think so many people relate to it though because like disease terrible obviously but I think it was for so many people was the first time where they really got to take a break from actively working and really think in solitude for the first time time that's really true it was march march sucks. it was march a little bit march is so and i mean it, it still was my first year and i was at the point after i got my needs improvement on my evaluation which it's probably one of those things it's like it's really like i don't think i've admitted that much because it literally sounds like being a failure and i know that it's not but i did need improvement which whatever but after getting that going to school was so hard i just was like really really depressed and my anxiety was just really really bad so like all of a sudden we have an extra week off before spring break and then I taught the rest of the year online and it really helped me like I don't think I would have gotten through the year I think my mental health would have gotten so bad that I would have had to leave I like to be open about my mental health that's actually (laughs) that's one of the things that got me in trouble this past year I forgot about that I posted on Twitter I know Twitter right now goodness Twitter's Um, on fire it's been a fun week on Twitter is it okay is it okay no No. is it good no is it funny Twitter has never Never been funny. And Twitter is funny now. And I'm like, I don't want it to leave now. Now I'm having fun. The parody account. Oh, so good. But no, yeah. So what did you put on Twitter? I got okay. fired for posting on Twitter once. So I'm yeah. so excited to hear. So I literally posted. My psychiatrist recommended that I just start doing like more mindfulness or yoga to help my mental health. And I literally said, I was like, no, I'm depressed. I need my medication. Yeah. <laughs> like not even something like. That wasn't bad. No, no. It's That's like, not what I said. You said the truth out loud. <laughs> <laughs> That's not why I got fired. It's hard because I know I feel like I'm telling everything like out of context, but when I was on my administrative leave and then had to um, return and have this meeting with HR. Wait, and wait, 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 freeze. Yeah. We Let just me, skipped the whole year. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> that's why this is. <laughs> so when I was on administrative leave. Wow. I know. That's like. Lauren has seen some shit, y'all. <laughs> 
I'm just saying, I literally feel like I'm interviewing like a war vet right now. Like, what? Like, she taught three years, and let me tell you, three years happened a lot. Everything um, happened so much and so fast. Accurate. Specifically to Lauren. Specifically. So you're teaching at home. You're like, what a relief. Also, same, because I wanted to quit. I was like, this is lit. I love being at home. I loved it. So then what happened? You're like, I love my kindergarten podcast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm the star. I had so much fun. <laughs> like, this was when Tiger King came out. Like, you know, just all the like, fever dream stuff. Oh, the golden era. So that was good. And then in April, though, I was like, ha ha, I got to get a new job. Did you already know you weren't going to be coming back? Well, this was, yeah, I did already know that I wasn't going to be coming back. Um, I kind of found that out in February. After so you got the needs, needs improvement. improvement. Yeah, That's like, so awkward so... that like in February, they're like, by the way, in three months, we want you to fuck off. But if you could still continue to come here and get tortured <laughs> literally every day, that would be perfect. For we us. would love it. Um, <laughs> what is it? Your admin needs to like have a sit down. They need to improve. Yeah, they need to. Improve. It's hard because it's hard. <laughs> because I genuinely really like this principal too and like I don't think it was malicious she wasn't malicious like she wrote an amazing back letter for me well, for, she's like, a victim of whatever your district is making her do your district needs improvement like that, something yeah. is wrong I, I do agree oh, with okay. that what's wild is sometimes like I literally knew I was like this is gonna become the hot town gossip because the new district I got hired in was my hometown oh, so dearie. all of the stuff that happened is like my hometown and so that's oh, like boy. so I'm for those at home shit's about mm-hmm. to get real yeah like it's, re- it's that's it's layered. really layered that's because it's like <laughs> too okay i'm buckled in i'm so, ready yeah so i got hired in back in my hometown third grade steam i was like yes this is gonna be yeah. so cool i'm gonna be teaching science and math and finally like a little bit older of kids and super pumped we started in the fall and i had 46 students however it was two classes Monday, Tuesday, they would have like science and math and then it flip-flopped each week. These kids were only seeing me for math two to three days a week. But you need daily math instruction. Isn't that like a law or is that only here that that's a law? It should be. I don't know how they plan this. That's a big math year. It is such a big math year and I feel so bad knowing that like my kids, a lot of them left third grade not knowing their multiplication that well. Yeah. And that's rough. But November comes around and they're like, coming back in person. I was like, okay, this is going to be great. And they call me in and they're like, hey, we need to have you start teaching literacy and have just two groups of kids instead of the four groups. I was like, I'm, this is my first year here. We'll do it. I was thriving. I mean, we had to be six feet apart. Masks. Couldn't like share utensils. I was bad about that. We did have communal pencils. Well, that's what they would tell us is they would literally, they'd be like, the kids cannot share anything. Here's three <laughs> pencils for all 15 of them. And I'm like, like, I remember they told me the kids need to be at least three feet apart. And I was like, the government definitely said six, but okay. I remember And then that. I literally <laughs> took a tape measure, measured my room, yeah. drew a blueprint, took it to the administrators and said, there's a physically not a yeah. way for me to fit them in here while being three feet apart. And they told me, you got to get creative. And I said, do you want me to hang them from the ceiling? What do you, what do you <laughs> don't put the desk No, no, up? that means you break the, the law. put the desk upside down? Bunk bed desk. <laughs> yeah, no, literally. I was like, they're going to have, we have nowhere to go but up. They just mean get creative with pretending <laughs> that you're doing it. And then when the district comes in, we're going to get creative pretending like we didn't know and you're breaking the rules. Exactly. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Very accurate. Oh my God, our teachers didn't do that? Oh my God. What? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I have the blueprint that I made on Canva. Yeah. <laughs> Just like so redacted, like you know everything about Canva. Is that what? I don't know everything about everything Canva, about but Canva. I fucking okay. love Canva. Okay. I love She's being Canva. modest. I only say I don't know everything because the great thing about Canva is there's always more to learn, and oh. every time I learn something new, it levels up. That's you know what I mean? Teacher mindset. I'll never know everything. Spoken like someone who truly loves Canva deeply. Okay, so you're there. The the kids are there's. 10 of them they're six feet apart they're sharing utensils because we have one utensil but we're thriving yeah so oh my gosh this actually is still i think one of the funniest things my class was the reason we had to go remote for two weeks because how many people in a class could have covid was like a certain percent but because my class was so small like one kid got covid in the morning class and one kid had covid in the afternoon class so we had to shut down the whole school yeah it, like did your because, coworkers kiss you honestly they're they like were yeah like, continue coughing into each other's mouths and room keep that shit out That's my room. Wait. i'm very intuitive we can cut that out but know. just know that this happens to me all the that time that was awesome i literally was what was my room number i can't do it on command <laughs> <laughs>
Um, <laughs> so we go over Mo, and then in April, this is when things start getting spicy. And not like spicy, no, not spicy. Things start getting like wild. And spicy so, in a bad way, <laughs> like spicy. diarrhea. Yes, yes, okay, that's good. Cause like, <laughs> that, that's accurate. Kids come back full day. Up until this point, <laughs> I swear, you're accurate with that description though. It literally, it's getting wild. Why did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> it's the worst feeling in the world because it's happening to you and you're just like I'm a victim <laughs> no it's you just feel like a victim okay. and how do you how do you <laughs> tell someone like how do you say like I need the day off or like I need someone to cover my room because say that like, help me in the work group chat hey you guys we would go into each other's room and go like this that means poop in American sign language we shared pooper meanwhile the one kid in the class that knows ASL is like <laughs> it's a family dynamic it's beautiful anyways so things were getting wild because april they're like we're going back full day the dynamic of combining two classes after being apart for so long was just unhealthy and they didn't give us any time they're like curriculum keep going so it's not like i could spend the admin comes in and it's like it looks like you're building relationships when what you need to be building is some fucking math <laughs> skills so if you could shut the hell up that'd be great thanks i think i tried calculating at one point how many math lessons and how much they missed and then i just got too overwhelmed and i was like no <laughs> Because you also missed the math lesson, so it was hard. <laughs> Listen, I say that the highest grade I could ever do math is fifth grade. One time when I was teaching high school, one of the kids was like, oh, Mr. Doctor, can you help me with my math homework? I'm really confused. And I was like, yes, as a literal genius, I would be honored too. And so I was trying to help them. And then I sat down and literally almost started crying because I was like, just confusing myself. And I was like, I'm literally, I says to do this and I'm doing it. And then it just doesn't add up to the number. And I went to the math teacher and I was like, is this NASA? Like, what are, what's going on here? Like the government expects us to do it's this so with them? It is NASA. Okay, but kindergarten math? too i'm gonna say for as like you're teaching them how to even just understand oh Do you know gosh. what the hardest I... thing to teach was what how many more every single time if you show them three and five and you say okay which one's more they all know five but then saying how many more they'll say eight they'll say five they will not say two but like third grade math oh my god but okay so basically second year it finishes this last six weeks just were hot mess express in every way these poor kids it's just really hard like i would go home and i'd be like crying to my mom and i live with my mom um uh, she's the best human ever <laughs> but i would tell her i'd be like i feel like like I'm failing them and they're not even learning because I'm just trying to keep everyone safe. So we finished that year and I'm like, okay, I'm coming back stronger than ever. Ooh, I was ready. I was like, third year, best year. Third year in third grade, we got this. We're gonna be in person full time. I still been posting on social media at that point. My one biggest claim to fame is that Jojo Siwa knows who I am. Yes. And commented on one of my videos. So I posted a video when Jojo Siwa first came out. I know some people are like, it's not that big of a deal. It is such a big deal and no one has to come out to, you know, be valid. But like her coming out was just such a monumental thing for so many individuals because she was young. So these young kids who, even if a lot, I had a lot of kids who were like, I don't like her music. I was like, you don't have to like her music. But she came out and had a girlfriend and one of my students came up to me and was like, did you know Jojo Siwa has a girlfriend? I was like, yeah, isn't that like, is that awesome? Like, they're like, yeah. And I remember just like after that exchange happened, just being like, oh my God, this person just showed my third grader that not only is it like okay to have a girlfriend, but like that's normal for like a teen. Yes. And it just was revolutionary. And so that mm -hmm. video got like viral and eventually she saw it and she was like, I love this. And I was like, she knows who I am. And I had my cute little proud educator banner behind me. And then I just was like, I've been learning about myself and you know, being more confident in who I am and just being like, wow, this is a part of my identity and I'm proud of it. And I want to keep educating. Like I wish that I had, I did not know anything about the LGBTQIA plus community growing up. And right. granted, I also was at a Catholic school, but like never saw any books or anything. So when mm -hmm. I started to like see that, I was just like in awe. And I had connected with a group of educators through Instagram who are queer individuals. And like, I'm mm -hmm. still in, like, when they added me to this group chat one, I felt like the most famous, I was like, oh my gosh, like these 
were all the, these were the educators who literally had made me feel comfortable saying that this is part of my identity and so yeah, yeah. and just being out and being in the classroom and sharing these things and they changed my world and like they gave me so much hope and just encouraged me so like I started posting I was like hey look you know these are all these amazing books like just different things you to, can do to support students and whatnot you know was just really proud of myself for being true to myself that was like the biggest thing I was like I'm growing you yeah. know this summer I was like oh my gosh we're starting up strong and I hung up my pride flag and I was like oh my gosh like this is a big deal and no one acknowledged it <laughs> like none of my coworkers, like <laughs> which I was like that's fine <laughs> like okay you're like me and everything ever <laughs> like, they I did I did have to take down my black lives matter sign um uh, no one yeah, I know. I was there like, was one so time at my district where a teacher put up in the hallway, like, in this school, we believe, like, Black Lives Matter, love is love, like, that thing. And there was the debate around, like, whether or not we were going to be able to leave that up. And they decided it was fine because it was so many sentiments. And then literally the admin was like, if it had just been the traditional Black Lives Matter flag because it's affiliated with an organization, I don't know if we could have. Meanwhile, I had one in my room and I was like, mm mm-hmm for sure I was like on the same page exactly I completely see what you mean and there's no reason at all for you to walk in that room right now you don't come in no so reason so stupid <laughs> so it's <laughs> and I literally would be like I so you're telling me that I can't tell my students that I believe in their basic human rights right <laughs> like that's and so the oh god um but I, that's that's the actual um response so I had this flag up and I was like oh my gosh okay like I'm starting the year off and when kids came to open house they came into my room and I was so excited their grown-ups when stuff were coming in with them and so I was like oh my god I have this big flag up and no one said anything they were all like excited and one of my kids was like I love your flag and I was like my heart. It was, yeah it's such a small it's not a small thing yeah. because it is like a big thing but it yeah. is something that you can do that could be so monumental to a child yeah. that it had two weeks it had two beautiful weeks that was is up in my classroom <laughs> I had the first two weeks of school and we were loving life I was doing morning meetings outside we were Oh, nice. thriving That's a good idea I want to steal that we had a door to my classroom so you could like get right out and there was like this beautiful patchy grass so like we just spent time outside we read outside like every day until it got like too cold I'm so jealous of people who had a classroom with a door to outside I didn't have one with a teacher across the hall for me had one but it was like glued shut and we were asking one of the teachers that had been at the school for like 30 years we we're like why do some doors have or some rooms have these doors that are glued shut that go to outside and he said it's so because teachers they would have like the door and then a little concrete stoop right outside the door so I was like what's this for and he said it's because teachers would smoke while they were teaching back then and literally they would have to open the door and smoke from the stoop and I was like maybe we should bring Yay. that back like, I think no one even like questions that but then they question like the stoop, having like a little flag up in your room so that they're like okay. the teacher smoking area is perfectly fine but the pride flag yeah. must be removed immediately yeah. um, I mean I just think about too like my mom always talked about she went to Catholic grade school too um, growing up and like you should get hit by the nuns she never did but like our you know like my mom too and my dad <laughs> The nuns were boxing, <laughs> let me tell they you. They smack them with rulers. Yes. Children should be seen and not heard is like the sentiment that yeah, they... was popular. Okay, so yeah. So, so. Okay, so back to your your pride flag. It's two weeks. Two gorgeous. weeks. Things were going well. Moment. Two weeks into the year, I was like, wow, things are going well. I feel like I'm setting up a really good environment. And then one night I am uh, just was on TikTok and all of a sudden I get like multiple notifications. And I was like, I haven't posted in a while. Like, what is this? And I start seeing these messages and it's like, oh she's gonna be fired by Friday like can't wait till she's gone like this is not the kind of teacher we should see like she's all over Twitter and I was like I don't use Twitter that much so what's happening where so I go to Twitter and I see this one video of me and I like want to cry for you as I were like it's already like knowing where this is going like I want to yeah, throw up and cry it's a lot but yeah. I had posted this cute video at the end of the school year being like hey these are some books you can use in your classroom to just like start teaching about LGBTQ plus people so the different books that I shared was a book with two loving fathers Papa Daddy and Riley a book celebrating Writing activists over time who had changed the world, um, which was Kid Activist by Robin Stevenson and had an amazing section on Harvey Milk. Then there was the book Rainbow Revolutionaries, which is 50 LGBTQIA plus people making history. The book Stonewall, Queer Heroes, It Feels Good to Be Yourself, a book about gender identity and the book I Am a Prince. And I was wearing a Love is Love t-shirt and 
had my proud banner in the background. This account lives of TikTok. They posted this video. I'm afraid. It, uh, understandably, they posted this video and said, this is what like an indoctrinating teacher is. And they very much have changed how they post now. At the time, they had probably about 200,000 followers. They currently have 1.5 million and they verified themselves by paying the $8. And Joe Rogan had said how it was his favorite Twitter account. And so that got tons more people. But at the time that this happened to me, about 200,000 people um, followed them. And I see this post talking about me and I was like, oh my God, I'm literally just showing books like what's wrong and i started reading through the comments and reading through the comments and i just was trying to i had no idea what like was happening and so people, you're just trying to like figure out the situation yeah, just like, like you're <laughs> literally just trying to read the room yeah i was like <laughs> what are these people you know like what are they saying about me and so people started you know they were saying like this is why kids need to be homeschooled like this is indoctrination of our children like who she's talking about sex she's talking about all these things and then the hardest one and you can decide if you want to edit this out or not um or even maybe just give like a trigger warning like people started calling me a pedophile and um like right he, seeing that written uh was just something it like it hit me to the core because i was like you my then i started getting like death threats and um threats of like other horrible things too i mean um so i was like okay this happened this is like at this point i'd probably been like trying to figure this out for like an hour it's like 1 a.m and i was like okay i'm I'll, I'll, i'm gonna just go to bed and see try to see what happens tomorrow i texted my best friends and my sister just being like hey uh if you can go report this account um or report these things like i don't really know what's happening i get to school the next day and we have a staff meeting and i get that email right away that says lauren you need to meet with me during um your prep period and i was like oh god i knew why after the staff meeting i went right away to my union and i was just like this is happening and i i have no idea what to do and then I started finding out that the school had been getting calls and emails all morning. And I went through my inbox and had hundreds of emails and different things. And the problem was the account through LinkedIn found out my school, found out my district, and found out, I don't even know how, my old address, my home address and shared all this through this account. So 200,000 people knew where I worked, the contact um, for my district and everything, and were calling and emailing and saying all those things about why I should be fired and how they can't believe that they would hire someone like me. And so I went to my union and they were just like, stay in here, like, we're, we're gonna, like, we'll chat and figure this out. And HR was calling and all these things. And they're like, okay, Lauren, like, we are going to put you like for right now you're going to go home and like be on like administrative leave until we like get this figured out like we want to make sure you're safe like and all these things i'm like sobbing i have a video of myself sobbing from this because i was like i need to document this so they sent me home they were like grab all your things i was like okay i was like okay i'll be probably back like within a day or two right like this isn't um i didn't come back for nine days nine school days when i i get home and my mom gets home and i'm just like i couldn't stop crying and then i get like all these emails from like news reporters and stuff and i'm like <laughs> and my district the union was like do not contact anyone do not reach out do not anything like blah 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 and so i was like okay i'm not going to so i remember i just like slept i literally was like i am going to sleep and i'm gonna enjoy this snap and cry and that's fine and then someone sent me there's like news camera and police at school right now like at the end of the school day trying to interview people to find out what happened and one of my students parents from previous year talked to them she said like the nicest things about me and it was the most beautiful um like i read it and i like she was just so kind and there was so much support and that's something that like i am so thankful for and i genuinely believe that's why i kept my job was because a lot of the town rallied for me and I like hope every single one of them knows that like I am eternally grateful because uh that I genuinely yeah so more articles and stuff are coming out I printed them at the end of the year I was trying to explain to people I'm like this isn't like self-deprecating or like but I think this is like a trauma that is important to process and like I saved a lot of like the beautiful ones so like I mean I have all these ones it's like we support you like we support you like bring back our teacher <laughs> there's so many from my students then that friday there was a rainbow out so literally the parent organized and told everyone it's like wear rainbow on friday to support miss crow and kids across all the schools in my district wore rainbow and then kids in other towns 
were wearing rainbow and they didn't even like know me and it just people were sending me all these pictures they had gone that morning and like drew chalk all over my school like love and like all these things like all over the sidewalk and like in front of my classroom so like i'm in this like state where i'm at home and can't be with my students most of them probably have no idea why i'm just gone and i wasn't allowed to talk to them or talk to anyone and my sister flew in from new york and my sister is also an educator she flew in and brought her corgi puppy so she brought the emotional support corgi puppy. literally the corgi is our strongest soldier in this battle genuinely <laughs> like to have someone like i mean she dropped everything like she was just like i know you need me here and like i did at this point like three days later i knew that i was gonna be out for a while and later i found out that they talked with a lot of people to like find out what I had been doing in my classroom or like was I reading these books or like had I talked about being queer before or like all these different things the wildest thing was I had to create sub plans and so I made these like beautiful slides yeah yeah I had to create sub plans so they're like <laughs> by the way while you're going through this dramatic and widespread trauma if you could send us a reading lesson three with the materials that would be dope they're like we're putting you on leave can you just go ahead and uh send that like, in what's going on with the sentence diagramming and what was so hard is like i literally would do like a morning message every day and so i was like can i say that i miss them they're no. like no no immediately the no. first few days it was a different sub each day so like i would send these plans i'm like i don't know what my classroom looks like i have no idea where any of my materials are like and it was really hard because people from my school and district reaching out to me was like nice but it was really hard to be like i can't like i don't know what to say to you and i like i don't know how I, there was just so much like I didn't know what to do and like my accounts were all private and like that was the first thing they like delete every video I'd hide I hid all of them because I was like I'm not deleting these I want to hold on to them you were like um I put work into this I created this content you just want me to delete it Jojo C was coming will never disappear from my page no. you're in the HR meeting and you're like do you even know who fucking Jojo Siwa <laughs> is how could you ask me to delete that as if I'm not going through enough <laughs> you bring Jojo to the meeting she would have supported me you know what <laughs> she comes in the little like rainbow lamp Lamborghini that she has with the Jojo Siwa I'd ball cry. On. I would. You know what? I know that she would have supported me. There's people who would have. She would have. I did post on like my close friend stories and stuff and I was like this is happening to me right now. Like if any of you had advice. The amount of queer educators and librarians and people who've been targeted by this account lost their jobs. I am very lucky that I did get to keep my job and I do have a lot of privilege as like a white cis woman and I know that even like teaching in a town and teaching in a state where like I, I did have a lot of support. That is isn't the reality for so many of the people that have been targeted by this account. Um, my meeting with HR was like one of the most terrifying hours of my life. My sister drove me and like waited there with the corgi. <laughs> I like went in and they pulled up different things. I was questioned about two Twitter posts, the one about the mental health and then the other. Wait, what did they ask you about the mental health? Were they like, have you tried not being mentally ill? <laughs> be like uh i wish but one of the twitter posts i forgot about this i taught yoga for lgbtq plus students and they were like questioned me about that twitter post i was like this doesn't have anything to do with school like there's a lot of things if i could go back and change like i shouldn't have been taking videos at my school i didn't know these things like there are things that like i was in the wrong for i take responsibility of that but the main thing that people were upset about was that i had queer children's books or that i was that i even acknowledged that queer and trans people exist Let's Let's be for real. You weren't on leave because of filming in your classroom. Yeah, no, exactly. It pisses me off. Everyone has done things in their career where in the moment you like were looking at it with one lens, then you look back from a different lens, you're like, oh, I really probably shouldn't have done that. And that's a very different conversation about filming in a classroom versus what we all know led to this moment, you know? Oh, one of the things they questioned me about was the issue was people scared that like I was spending so much of my curriculum and time talking about like LGBTQ plus things. I was like, I have so much curriculum. I'm never talking about it. Like even when I did like a read aloud of Papa, Daddy, and Riley. I was talking about families. Like, there are queer families. Like, people thought that I was spending my whole day talking about these things. And that's so what libs of TikTok think is happening. Yes. No, libs of TikTok thinks that what's happening in elementary education is the class I took in college that was literally like intro to sex yes. and gender from sociology. Like, they literally. think that's what's going on in third grade when in fact that is not happening. No, but I like want to be like, what do you think is going on? Like, paint me a picture. Like, let me let Please. me see the model lesson of what you think is happening right yeah, now. Yeah, what do you like, think? <laughs> I would love, I would have loved to be like, honestly, I welcome people to come into my room after. And yeah. like, I had said, I was like, if people want to come see me teach, 
they're welcome to. Like it would have terrified me, but you can come see what I do. I had to put um, in order to return, could not do any more social media. So like I didn't post all last year and I'm like still struggling a little bit to post more. Cause I'm like, oh my God, they're gonna come for me. And like doing this, like causes so much. I'm like, you're not employed by them anymore. You're not gonna ask them for recommendation letters for future jobs. You're safe now. I, and like, maybe I'm not. Maybe my town is gonna hate me after this, but I ultimately, I need to share this for myself and I need to share this for the other educators who aren't able to. To. part of why I'm becoming a librarian is to be an advocate and like is to be standing up to these horrible hate-filled people who are harming our students and our children like that's not okay and like I don't care maybe I won't get hired at certain places but I don't want to be hired by them if they're gonna say would you want to work there no. <laughs> um, I'm so proud of you because I know how hard this is for you and how it, hard it's been for you yeah what I think is so scary about it too is that these hateful thoughts are passed down and I didn't know about Stonewall until I got to like college like Same. no one taught no. about these things and no. the amount of like queer literature or books that I have read has changed my life these authors who have shared their lives their stories or created like other stories too and just like what all these people have been through that needs to be shared and the fact that that's not an our history curriculum i mean i don't know redacted like i don't know much about like history curriculum but i know that in illinois from k to 12 at some point lgbtq plus history is supposed to be taught i literally brought this up to the district and i was like hey like i have some ideas for lessons that we could be doing and they're like nope it's gonna be talked about in the high school i get that the curriculum says k to 12 but like there are stuff we could mm -hmm. do <laughs> people think queer and they literally just think sex it's like it's you can have like representation and teach people about diversity of family without making it sexualized and it's so not difficult to do it. I know it's like this is completely incomparable, completely two different scenarios, but the same way people teach like Loving versus Virginia, no one's talking about sex. They're talking about rights and separ no. and representation. Like you don't have to have a sexual conversation. The same way like when I taught pre-K and we would talk about families, who's your brother? Do you know your brother's name? It's like you're just talking about families you're not talking about what happens between two adults in their bedroom yeah like i don't understand how we can have disney movies where it's like <laughs> saved by a true love's kiss between a man and a woman like like that's the whole premise cis hetero people but then the second there's a photo of a family where there's like any type of gayness at all it's like the end of the fucking world it's like nobody's talking you're the one thinking about sex you weirdo that's literally like, y'all are weird then i think this is my theory is i think they don't know and they're afraid to ask and then it's just manifesting as this but if they're afraid to ask it's like oh if you're not asking these questions and you're just making assumptions about people that you don't know or that you're not even trying to listen to if you're making these hate filled like you have these hate filled ideas and I think ultimately a lot of it comes to like respecting human rights I'm currently in a young adult literature course and my professor is the coolest human ever I actually shared about this in my first week I like sent her these articles about me and I was like hey I'm willing to talk about this because I think as future librarians this could easily happen to me again and while I hope it doesn't like I do want to work in this community to like prepare us because we need to be the ones advocating for as you have the shirts it's like like education is political and stuff it's like libraries are political you know and it's like people are like oh my god but it's a public space and it's like look at the library of alexandria okay like <laughs> it's not even questioning politics right it's like you're saying that someone's human right or that someone's identity is wrong when books get banned and like i'm very like passionate about that and honestly if anyone from the office of intellectual freedom for the american library association decides to listen i'd love to work for you um <laughs> and like when we talk about these banned books, the top 10 books that were banned in 2021, seven of them are banned for LGBTQ plus content because it's considered sexually explicit. That is insane. My queer kids books, they were like, you can't have these in your classroom. And so I put them in my closet. In my closet, I literally was like, this is the most the homophobic thing I've ever done put is putting the these queer the books back in the closet. You put them back in the closet. Oh, the closet. Devastating. It was devastating. Oh, and I said with the pride flag. Yeah, no, I literally with that the pride flag. That would have made a great flag, TikTok. I know. Honestly, that might be something I will do now. Um, because they can't fire me. Um, <laughs> I remind myself that all the time. I'm like, they can't fire you. <laughs> they um, can't, nor should they. And nor should they. But when I got back, I was so nervous. But 
HR came into my room and I was like, is there anything that like needs to be changed? Yeah. Wait, how long did it take for you to come back? Nine you said days. Nine, school, nine days. school days. And so then you came back and they were just like, you're here now? Or was it like conditional? It was conditional. Like- it was conditional. So they came in. I was like, is there anything that you think like besides the queer books? She was like, you know, a lot of the complaints have been about like the big pride flag. And taking that down was like, my heart broke. I had like these two little pride flags. I was, I was sassy and I literally like, I was holding them up. I was like, what about these? And they were like, I think that's fine. And I was like, I can, like put them in my pencil cup. And I was it's like, like in college when they were like, you can bring notes to the test, but it has to fit on a note card sized piece of paper. That's the district rules for celebrating who you are. It has to fit on a note card size or smaller. Any human rights statement <laughs> has to be easily missed. If it's big, then people will think you really believe in it versus if it's small, they just think you're like a little bit of an ally. Yeah, it's like indoctrination. <laughs> they were like, allyship has to be below 5%. Once allyship reaches above 5%, well, that's when we have an issue. I one hate of, people. <laughs> I do too. Really do. One of, one of the things, um, I couldn't tell or talk with my students about why I was gone at all. It's hard because I do, I get it, but the hardest thing is I think my my students probably have like abandonment issues from teachers because I got COVID later in January. So I was gone again. And they literally asked the substitute, they're like, will she be back this time? And I was like, when I heard that, I literally was like devastated because I was like, oh my God, they genuinely think I would leave them because I was forced to leave them. Like, and it just was such a- uh, Could you tell their parents? Their parents knew. I mean, like they're literally, like they've been getting emails. um, Yeah, okay. So at least hopefully they had told- I don't think a lot of the kids knew. Yeah. think some of them knew you know and then the rest of the year I was scared I did have some support my best friend last year from teaching her name is Kimber she is the most like incredible person she was advocating for me and she was the reason I got through last year like her and my students Mm -hmm. I could go to work and I knew I was like oh my god at least I have Kimber a lot of people were nice to me and whatnot and people checked in on me but like I'm sure there are people in my school who like didn't like me and I mean I was even told like people didn't trust me I like went on Thanksgiving break last year someone asked me they're like well what what do you hope to continue doing because I was like I can't go back to this school like there's no way and I was like I want to keep working with children but being a classroom teacher isn't what I'm meant to do it's not healthy for me and I don't think I'm not bad at it but that's not where my talents lie and I was thinking about it's like I love literature and I love the stories that exist and I want to be a librarian I've said that since I was little Mm -hmm. and when I finally was like oh my god I can go and do that like I can start fresh I can go and pursue a career that is gonna fill me up and this first semester of grad school has taught me that I have never felt like I belonged more and I'm so thankful for my three years of teaching like even though a lot of it was fucking horrible like not the students the students are great even I had a lot of really good families I have a lot of really good things but just I will never be a classroom teacher again yeah. I am positive of that and sometimes I, like for a second I'll be like is that like is that a bad thing and I'm like no that's I'm not meant to be there and I feel very certain about that now and very comfortable and knowing that like my life and my talents and who I am is going to I'm going to actually be able to be the best version of myself and be myself and not be like questioned and I'm going to advocate for that like I will find a job that will listen like when I applied to grad school I wrote about this in my essays I was like I have extenuating circumstances (laughs) if you search my name (laughs) you will find articles about me oh literally one of them entitled I told friends I told you this opinion article gay act this elementary teacher needs her own time out. You're like, the way the way I'm being hate crimes and infantilized is really just the winning combo. It literally is <laughs> absurd. And one of the things that it says in it, um, oh God, okay. The fact that, that she seemingly displayed the books on TikTok indicates her pride in indoctrinating prepubescent kids into the LGBTQ plus, no, actually she didn't say plus, LGBTQ lifestyle. Oh, wait, 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 I'm gonna oh, vomit. If a nine-year-old asks, Miss Crow, what is gay sex? Would her answer be, well, Donnie, I'm glad you asked. Class, let's discuss the details of gay and lesbian sex life. The way you can tell they have never been in a public school nope. classroom by the fact that they use the word Donnie. Retired, <laughs> retired English professor. Retired from know. when? I would That's the mic hit with the word Donnie. No one has <laughs> named their child Donnie since the 60s. What the hell? Okay, but like, what? So, do they really think in their heart of hearts 
that if se- a child asks about sex, you're like, you're like, I actually have a gay sex anchor chart. The coolest thing to happen was the, some of the authors of the books reached out to me. And I feel so shitty because they sent these emails and I wasn't allowed to talk to anyone. And so I literally have this email from like one of these authors who I'm like, oh my God, she wrote Pride Puppy. Her name's Robin Stevenson. Like she's amazing. She sent an email like to my district and supported me. And I've never like wow. sent her an email. Thank you. And I've been meaning to do that. And like, I've been wanting to, but I also, so I've been reading the book Shout, which is by Lori Hulse Anderson, who wrote Speak. In this book, she's talking about when she was writing Speak. I'm just gonna read this because I do think it's really like important. And when people think about what happened to me or what's happening to books, I think it's important. So censorship is the child of fear the father of ignorance, and the desperate weapon of fascists everywhere. So she says, censoring my books in the name of innocence will not build the fence you want. It's not a defense against danger or stranger, the fend or foe. Yeah, like all of these things, it's like- I just got the shivers. Censoring books isn't going to make things better or make them not occur. It will not build the fence you want. No, people- are still gonna be gay and that should be celebrated. Like, people be gay. People be gay and we're fabulous. And if anything, these are the books that need to be shared so much. And you still need to have joyful books about like LGBTQ plus people. Nick Stone writes all like books about black individuals shouldn't just be historical things or shouldn't just be all like, hey, it should be. They shouldn't be all like trauma based. No, exactly. there should, like we just need to see like black people having joy. We need to see queer people and trans people joyful. Like that deserves to be in literature and it's not going to change that we exist and it's not going to change that that people have been marginalized or discriminated against for it and these accounts that i think are so focused on hate i think my biggest hope for them like they cause so much pain to so many people and i just wish they would take a second to take a step back and realize especially i think libs of tiktok has a 1.5 million people platform they could do good things or they could shut up and do nothing or that too they could just be done <laughs> But like these people who are so focused on hate, it's like they spent time calling my district. They spent time writing these emails. They spent time sending me death threats. Was that a really good use of your time? Like to continue to just tell someone how much you hate them for who they are. Is that a good use of your time? They are so filled with hatred. Like that must feel so poisonous in their body. Cause I know how I feel when I feel angry and like, I don't like that feeling. And that is their day to day. That is how they feel every day. It just, it sickens me. It really does. And one of the things I think about too is that this hate that they have, I started to get angry. But up until that point, I'd been scared. People would say things I'm like, well, the worst they can do is fire me. And like, I said that as a joke, but I also kind of was like, I've already been put through this. Like what else, they can fire me, cool. One of the things I wanna just say real quick is people were asking me, they're like, well, why did you go back? And it's hard because I was like, I don't wanna go back. I don't wanna be in this space, but financially I needed it. and. I wanted to be there for my students and I didn't want them to kick me out or them to win, like the district to win and have me leave. And in April, I started to finally feel angry, angry about like what happened to me, angry that this was happening to many more of my friends. Now the platform was bigger, so they were even causing more harm. Angry is an emotion that we like talk about as being good. And I don't want to change into like, happiness because I'm not happy about this. I'm going to be angry. So I want to use this anger and channel it towards good. And that for me looks like advocating that for me looks like sharing these books even more and standing up to these people. I have the ability to do that. I do have a platform, even though I'm scared to use it. I have it. Um, there's a lot of nuances too with all of this. My biggest hope is that like by sharing this, I wish that this would never happen to another person, but it will. And my biggest hope is that educators who are listening to this or people who are listening to this, being a co-conspirator is standing up for those teachers. It's the people who did email my district and say positive things. It's the people who did stand up in the board meetings and demand I be returned. That's what we all need to be doing when these bad things happen, being the one that's being there for them in whatever capacity you can. So how I want to, so you, this happened, it was like this two week period. You said it was in like October, September, November, nope, right? This was right. Or September. Yeah, it was right at the beginning. So then you came back, finished the year and then left over the summer? Yes, I moved okay. in August. So I spent time there and it's weird because like my mom still lives there. So it's like, I'm going back for winter break. It was my hometown. And I know my students are like, we want to see 
you. And I have a lot of like trouble knowing like what's right for me, but it was my home. And me and Kimber are still like super close. And she's been telling me like about positive things that are going on in the school. And like, that's also been giving me hope, but it doesn't mean that I need to put myself through more pain by like going back there. Mm -hmm. While inspiring, you still went through a whole heck of a lot of trauma to get there say ultimately should not have happened should not no. have happened. <laughs> under any circumstances it just i'm just i can't even fathom Oof. thank you i mean i a lot of therapy a yeah. lot of processing and i'm thankful that i've had a lot of really supportive people also in my life i remind myself when it gets hard i'm like i have the ability now in this new future as a librarian to be unapologetically myself and to fight this hatred and there's so many good places out there too like libraries are a source of community they are a place for so much learning and growing and so i do feel very excited and thankful that that's gonna be where i'm gonna work i'm gonna use all this and they're not gonna get me down i'm still allowed to be sad or like feel different things but like they're not silencing me that's like the biggest thing it's like i'm gonna be louder <laughs> onward and upward yes and i love libraries i'm a number one fan of the library because the library is one of the last places that we have that you can exist without a capitalistic expectation of you for small children for the elderly for everyone it's one of the few places that you can literally just be, be and exist and one of my best friends she's not a librarian because i know that you that is a very credentialed title and you can't just walk around calling yourself a librarian but she is a full-time library employee she's a librarian she is a librarian she might not have her <laughs> master's in library science but you know what no you're working at a library and you're putting in the time you're changing the world you're a librarian every time she tells me about her job i literally start crying because like you know how you can go to some libraries and check out technology yeah. it's her job to like do that and then train the people on how to use it so like this woman came in with this old sewing machine and she like taught this lady how to use it and she teaches people how to use fancy cameras and stuff like that and like elderly people come there to learn how to use computers and I'm like literally our society this is like the last pillar of like wholesomeness that we have going for us yes I stand I yes <laughs> I just remember loving how libraries made me feel growing up like there was a lot of chaos in my childhood and whenever we were at the library I could like escape in a book every time I enter a library I have this like feeling of peace come over me and part of preserving that is making sure that they are kind of this sacred space where we are not banning books we are not censoring information we need a safe neutral, neutral place and this is a random library plug for all the libraries out there if people don't know you can get a library card for free in most places and then it gives you online access so if you're like I hate leaving my house you can still engage in the library from home and I don't know if every library does this but my library you can rent little wi-fi hotspots from them and they're very 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 ah. cheap so if you ever need that call the library before you call your phone provider. I have loved this conversation literally more than anything and I appreciate you guys taking the time to like chat with me so much. Thank you for taking the time to tell us about your journey. It's an honor Thank to have you, you yes. here. Thank you. I'm so happy that you came. Me too. Thank you all for joining us on Teacher Quit Talk. Thank you to Lauren for sharing her story. We cannot wait to see what library incredibleness you go on to do. We're so excited to see you and this episode we wish was sponsored by Jojo Siwa. Jojo, if you're out there. <laughs> we love you. Kisses. Bye-bye.